bringing an army of 300,000 prayer warriors into daily spiritual combat. And he's challenging you to make your home God's altar. The doors are opening to the nations of the earth for this prayer message, which will change your life. God is going to raise up a new kind of Christian that when we go into battle, we lock it. We have declared war against the enemy, and there's no turning back. I'm the spirit of witchcraft. We just needed someone to pull us together and go to war. It is a televangelist's assault on San Francisco. But the so-called sinners, including gays and pro-choice advocates, say they'll fight it. Evangelists, please don't fight away. That musical invective is directed against television evangelist Larry Lee, who's holding prayer meetings at San Francisco's Civic Auditorium Wednesday night in a sort of Halloween exorcism of witchcraft, drugs, and sexual perversion. A group called Ghost for Grand Homosexual Outrage at Sickening Televangelists plans a protest rally outside the prayer service. He's calling people perverts, he's calling um, the community of San Francisco devil worshippers, and it's not something that can be taken lightly or ignored because what his language does is it fosters physical attacks. Lee got himself and his karma into trouble when he announced his visit to exercise the city of its spirit of perversion. Lee contends that spirit runs wild in San Francisco not just on Halloween but every night of the year. Gay and lesbian groups say perversion is a thin costume disguising a very dangerous homophobia. We believe in, in, a, uh, in traditional values, the Judeo-Christian values that our country was founded upon. I think they're Nazis. It's what I think. I think that they need an agenda to promote, to keep their political thing going, you know, keep those dollars rolling in. But these people are smooth. I think they want this to be crystal knocked, is my sort of overall read on this situation for Halloween with Larry Lee. This is sort of a, a seeming like crystal knocked situation where we're going to go out and we're going to openly persecute homosexuals. I think that that's their idea. I mean, if they were true Christians, they wouldn't have to call themselves prayer warriors. I mean, I just can't imagine Jesus getting behind that concept for a second. He's, um, he's nuts. And he's dangerous. He's a, he's a dangerous nut. He's not a Christian, that's what? for sure. He's a fascist. We are going out there and we're saying no to some very evil people. And, um, they're evil because they're, they're bigots, they're homophobes, and they want everyone to believe like they believe, and we're just going out to say, no, thank you, we're alive, we like our lives, we're going to party, and uh, we say no to you. My attitude about any religion is kind of live and let live. I guess I was brought up with a fundamentalist Christian background, but <laughs> I don't have any real strong feelings about it one way or the other. It's not for me, certainly, but um, I don't feel like going down and converting other people. And I don't feel that he should come to San Francisco and try to mess with our lifestyle. So uh, you were brought up a fundamentalist when you were a child. Did you believe in principles of fundamentalism? Well, I didn't realize it was a fundamentalist church at the time. I just, looking back on it now, I realize it was. But uh, we used to sit in the back of church, our Sunday school class, and read comic books about Armageddon. I don't have any, any negative feelings about Christianity at all. In fact, I think the teachings of Jesus are, are a very positive thing. It's just that what people how people twist it around to meet their own political ends. I, I think that's horrible. Uh. <laughs> Too much, huh? Yeah. Well, I grew up in the Lutheran church, which is kind of like growing up in no church. It was very, very meaningless. We were just forced to do it so that it looked good, I think. There was no feeling there. There was nothing to be have any feeling about in the Lutheran church as far as I was concerned. But years later, when I was a teenager, I found a church that I really liked and had my first gay experience with, with the minister of that church, and it was a secretive love affair filled with hot, steamy sex, and it was just truly wonderful. Well, what church was this, please? Because I think there might be some other people out there who are looking for the hot, steamy uh, sexual experiences with the minister. Well, it doesn't exist anymore because he was a, he, like all of his contemporaries, so it seems he was a liar and a thief and a cheat and a deceiver. And none of that did I know at first, of course. I'm a Lutheran. 
I've, I've been a Lutheran all my life. I, I grew up in this pretty conservative Lutheran church, and I've sort of gravitated toward more liberal Lutheran churches, but I've still managed to stay in it. Right now, people are at home. They're at the Hilton, and they're watching this on TV, these actual people who came with Larry Lee, his friends and his, his supporters. Um, what do you have to say to them, you know, one-on-one? -on -one? Folks, we're your sons and daughters. We came out to San Francisco because... You know, it's just kind of hard to be this way in Texas, but we're still people and we're capable of loving each other just like you're capable of loving each other. We want your tolerance and your acceptance. We want you to see us for what we really are, which is some happy, healthy people who know how to have fun. So don't hate us, don't beat on us, just accept us the way we are. God gave me a vision while I was in prayer of calling you to help me and let's get a Prayer Warrior Pocket New Testament in every military person's hand. I can't help but thinking about my friend Johnny Casta, who was, who was a member of our staff and who now is in uh, our prayer army, part of our ministry. Johnny was blown up by a landmine in Vietnam, but he talked about the little remembrances about God and how he called out to Jesus, and the Lord saved him. We pray that our boys will not die, but if they face death, this could be the last tool that they have in their hand to tell them about Jesus. We have a way to get the Bibles to them, but we need your help. The Church on the Rock has a relationship with something called Paralife Ministries in Dallas, which has been for the last several years engaged in doing what is known in U.S. counterinsurgency doctrine as psychological warfare in El Salvador. This has involved primarily going to military bases throughout El Salvador and preaching to the troops that they have not only the right to kill their fellow citizens, but the duty as Christians to wage a, a sort of a Christian crusade against communism. Larry Lee's church has been the probably the single most important church donor to Paralife Ministries, according to the staff of Paralife Ministries. So I think the point is, uh, furthermore, Larry Lee's church has been used as an organizing base for the recruitment of U.S. Christians to go down to El Salvador and preach to the Salvadoran military. And I don't have time right now to go into what all the implications of that are. In fact, our own Congress has finally just cut the U.S. Uh, aid package to El Salvador by 50 percent after a decade of you know, a very intense and brutal civil war in which approximately 70,000 people have been killed. So the fact that Larry Lee is involved in preaching to the military to continue uh, war against the population and is in fact using his church as a base of fundraising and organizing, I think has really serious implications that concern people here in the Bay Area. The other point that I wanted to make that, that really relates to the role of Larry Lee's church in Central America has to do with this whole concept of spiritual warfare, which is the term that many on the Christian right use, and that's why I titled my book that. Um, in fact, it really ought to be called psychological warfare, or it ought to just be called warfare, because that's really what's going on here. Uh, I brought along one of the things that Larry Lee sends to anybody who requests getting on his mailing list or sends him any kind of donation, and that is this little uh, tinny little dog tag, which is symbolic of the, of the mentality and the kind of consciousness that Larry Lee is trying to promote among evangelical Christians.